classified as a third felony offender, offense, simple burglary, and conspiracy to commit second degree murder. Sentencing date, December 19, 2011, revoked on August 20, 2018, and July 16, 2018. Sentenced to 10 years DOC, eight years suspended, five years probation, 25 years at hard labor concurrent. Parole date, May 11, 2020. Good time is December 25th, 2021. Full term is February 11, 2039. Is this information correct, sir? Ms. Parole. Thank you. Good morning. How you doing, Mr. Major? I'm fine. How are you? Uh, I want you to know that you are uh, you from from uh, the cases that we've seen today and on the on the docket for the day. Uh, I think you're the closest one to get out, regardless of what happened. You get out on Christmas Day of this year. Yes, ma'am. So that that's pretty good. Now tell me uh, what happened in transitional work in August of August the third of nineteen. And you did you lose them? You lost them forty five days of good time. What happened there? Yes, ma'am. Uh, well. I actually had uh, a guy who would be at uh, the work release where I was at off of Heron. And other guy I was working with, they, uh, he was actually the one bringing it in. And the CO had, he used to pay the correction officer money to let him bring it in. And when the guy would leave, that was a, a friend of mine who I met while I was there. And he died like twice. And then they brought him back to life. But uh, he knew that I knew about it and he figured I was going to tell eventually due to that guy being a friend of mine. And uh, first the CEO wrote me up for a 21. And when they did the investigation on it, Gordon Pickett over there, the other CEO who was doing counsel, he saw no signs of that. So he did his investigation, I guess, to other inmates of what type of character, you know, I hold over there and what not. And he said, he see no reason for me to be uh, removed from this transitional work program. Well, due to that, the correction officer was off. So he came back to work two days later. And he came to my bed. I had to leave to go to the tugboat three o'clock in the morning. So I leave like around 2.20, from the work days. Um, he woke me up out of my sleep at like one something. I thought I was actually late for work. I said, so I just give me a minute, I'm about to get myself together. He said, no, uh, get up, I'm about to, I got a handcuff. So I said, for what? And he said, uh, just get up, I got a handcuff. You do to a prior investigation. So I said, well, if you're talking about that write-up, Warden Pickett already did an investigation on me. Well, he handcuffed me with my hands behind my back. We started to walk down the hall. He said that I got all out of control and whatnot. But once, not once he had to say that he had to get physically restrained or made me or tease me to get me under control. He said that he gave me to the office and then that's when I take all my shirt, shoes and socks and told him F it, let's fight. Well, when I went to the disciplinary board at Hunt's, with the warden and one of the majors that I explained and I bought my um, my schedule for work that particular day. He said that the incident occurred at 5.50 in the morning. If that's the case, I would have been ruled up for aggravated work offense because I wouldn't have even went to work. I, I argued that in, uh, in court and uh, I pointed out, you know, his, his statement that he did. You know, he tried to build a bad character on me and everything like that. But, you know, the truth is going to reveal itself, especially in black and white. So with that being said, they, they seen it was like, well, how could you take off your shirt, shoes and socks if you, you know, handcuff behind your back? And I said, right. So I told them they would call us, if, you know, to get the surveillance cameras. I was willing to get my lawyer at the time who I had to get the, uh, the auto and video in a particular office where we was at. And that was the case to prove my innocence. You know? And they said, well, it don't add up. They told me usually for disrespecting or threatening a correction officer that they'll take six months good time and mandatory to take the work. 
It says right up, don't add up. So uh, we only took 45 days and let me come out with this. Man. They told me I'd go back to it. So I left out of the room. And then I asked the officer, can I speak to him? And he said, yeah, hurry up. I said, well, y'all gonna send me to another work release? They said, no, you go back to us back. And I told him, I don't feel comfortable with going back there because I'm being targeted. I already had one write up that I had no knowledge of. You know, uh, I have a lot of respect for myself as well as others. You know, more than I actually did when I was on the streets. But, you know, Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I'm going to cut you off there because we all, okay. I, I, uh, all right. There definitely was a lot going on, but nevertheless, you did lose 45 days of good time and you got removed from work release. And yes. how long, how long had you been there? I had been there three and a half months. I didn't, I didn't hear you. Like three and a half months. Yeah. Three and a half months. Okay. All right. Uh, just, uh, just for the record, I want you to know that we have a we do a risk assessment, and you and you rate high on our risk assessment, and that's based on a lot of factors, and uh, most of them are historical factors, things you've done uh, in the past, and so that shows that you are a high risk uh, for reoffending if we let you out. But you also have uh, uh, good programs, 420 days of programs. So call out for me the top three programs that you've taken. That's really made a difference in in, uh, in who you are. Oh, uh, understanding, reducing anger and feelings. Okay. Uh, uh, man, Louisiana management risk phase mm -hmm. one, also phase two, and I, I also learned a lot through the uh, pre-release program bill because it, it's just not one topic; it's, it's multiple topics. To me, it cover all bases. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Uh, and also, you do have a lot of law enforcement opposition. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm just going to inform you of that. Uh, the, the, uh, the DA's office sent a letter, and they uh, indicated in their letter that you were a fourth offender, and we show you as a third offender. What, what, what do you think you are you know, for as offender class? Um, <laughs> I think I'm actually a, a fourth offender. Okay, okay. Okay, I just wonder because I know you, and um, and there has uh there has been some um victim opposition that's been expressed, and one of the victims uh requests the funeral calls back of two thousand six hundred thirty one dollars and fifty eight cents. What do you say to that? Uh, to be honest with you, ma'am, you know, my, my simply go out to the families and friends. Of, uh, of the victims dealing with the case that I'm, I fell on. You know, no matter what, what I realized, no matter what a person was doing in life, no matter, you know, their highs or lows, you know, life is life. You know, and, you know, we all make mistakes, we have to learn as we go. Some people don't have the chance for life. So due to that, you know, like I said, my son did go out to the family, you know, whatever I could do to help. Some kind of way, I'm willing to do so. So, the, the pay, you know, the two thousand dollars and the funeral arrangement, you know, as long as I have the, you know, the finances, the job to, to help towards that, I'm willing to do so. To be honest with you. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so you uh, you also had a write up. I forgot. I had it in my notes. Here. Your last write up was actually March of 2020. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So you've had two write-ups, and how long you've been down this time? Seven years and five months. Okay, you have two write-ups in seven years and five months. Okay. And if you're successful today, uh, what are your plans? Where would you live, and how would you take care of yourself? Excuse me. Excuse me. If you are successful today and you are released early, where would you live, and how would you support yourself? Well, I would live with my cousin, uh, Tibetan, Louisiana. And, uh, I have a lot of family support, but I ain't really leaning on that because they, they've been supporting me long enough. You know? Okay. So all that I can do to, to financially support myself. You know? But so, what means would you use to financially support yourself? Oh, uh, well, I'm a deckhand. 
my first aim is uh, to get to try to get in contact with the total company that I was working for, DMC Tarn. Okay. And Rules. That's my first aim. But uh, besides that, anything to uh, okay. get away from the streets. Okay. All right. Well, that's all the questions I. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, sir. I, I'm, a, I'm sorry. One, one last question. Tell me about your education. How much education do you have? Well, I'm here. I was actually in literacy when uh when I was going through school from a child up into the eleventh grade. I was in special education. Okay. Uh, I always had a problem with reading and, and spelling, but you know, I I never never stopped trying. You know, okay. I never stopped trying, so I just, that's just one of my weak areas. Did you ever get a diagnosis as to what it was? Um, they say I had uh, a learning disorder. Okay, okay. I used to uh, receive uh, SSI and disability, to be honest with you. Um, I had a speech problem up until my speech got better and like the fourth or fifth grade, they say that played a major part with me pronouncing sounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when did you last receive SSI? Oh, like around 2008, 2009. Okay, and why was it cut off? Well, at the, at the time I wasn't staying around my family. So uh, every so often you had to fill out this particular paperwork. It's a big packet that they sent it. And uh, I didn't send it in in time. And when it did. Okay. But it, you was about 30 uh, when you stopped receiving SSI. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And that's what, I, that's what seems to happen. You just don't, don't want to, you just don't want to be dependent on it anymore, huh? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Warren, can you uh, share with us what you want us to know about this young man? Well, he's he done pretty good since he's been here uh, since uh, January of 2020. Only one minor rule infraction. Uh, okay. He's taken some good programming. Uh, I'd like to see him get his education. He, he needs that. He's going to need that. Sure, but uh, he's a min. He's a minimum custody, uh, so he, he's done well. And uh, what job does he have there? Squad five. Go ahead. Uh, I'm. Uh, I work with Squad five, but uh, I'm actually uh, stationed at the dog kennel. I work with the K nine dogs, the bloodhounds, and, uh, and the beetles. Work with the K nine dogs. Where? At the uh, at the K nine unit. They have canine dogs, like when they all uh, take them around the jail to, uh, you know, test for drugs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the bloodhounds and beetles is like for people who are trying to escape or something like that. Okay, okay. So is, is that on the grounds or off the grounds? It's, on the compound? Or off the on, compound? It's on the compound. It's okay. It's outside the gate. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a class A trustee there. Good. All right, thank you. That's all I had, Chairman. All right, would um, Mr. James, Ms. Christine, would you like guys like to make a statement? Would you like to stay, make a statement after he, he makes a statement? What would you like to do? The mute's on. Still have the mute on. I would like to make a statement on behalf of Mr. Majors. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I believe that with his good time date coming up in December, um, him having the opportunity to get out with stipulations of parole would be a good thing for him to not just go out in the world and and have, you know, nothing just grounding him. Um I know that his, the company that he did do transitional work relief with in East Baton Rouge is willing to accept him back um, and let him work 
full time. Um, you know, he has been training the canines and at some, you know, sometimes as a trustee, as a class A trustee, he actually stands in the middle of the field for hours at a time waiting for the bloodhound dogs to find him, um, to train them to track scent. Um, you know, his, his fiance and his family is extremely supportive of him. Um, I do know that the facility has been seeing him more high risk than they should because they thought um, recently that he was actually in there for a second degree murder charge and it was only conspiracy. They believed that um, he was a violent offender on an aggravated charge and he wasn't. Um, I really just, you know, and I will say, you know, the warden mentioned the education, um, but the GED, I've actually been advocating to the prison to allow him into the GED class for six months, but I was told that they do not have a principal and there's a waiting list for that class. So he's done all of the available classes that there is to do currently there. And he does have long-term goals for um, financial means. You know, he will not have to rely on his family. But thank you. Would you like to make statements, James, or you, you're good? No, I, I, I think that's it. That's perfect. All right, thank you. Uh, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Just basically what I told the, um, the president that I spoke with, not too long ago, you know, um, I learned a lot throughout the time of this journey, you know, I, I I finally understand myself. That was one of my major problems that I had. I felt in life, you know, I ain't really know myself now. I'm conscious of all that, but you know, besides that, you know, I don't have too much to say. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is the panel prepared to vote? Yes. That's why, uh, Mr. Mr. Jared, I um uh, I, I do commend you on the uh, on the 420 uh, days of program that you've taken, uh, but the high tiger is it, a concern for me, and you and and the proximity of your good time day. I like to see you get a mental health evaluation, and get some things nailed down uh, before you leave. Uh, you you uh, and but uh and 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 like your attorney just said. Things have been locked down, and we were just told this week, Monday, that everything is open back up. Is, it, is that so, Ward? If that is the case, program is back open up. Yeah, and so we were told. So hopefully, you you will be able to get a, a mental health evaluation and kind of get some things lined down. Because uh, what the the programming that you receive should walk out in your write ups. You should demonstrate in your behavior what you learn in the, in the programs. And I, I, I'm not seeing that right now. And I, I need you to take another pause and, and kind of look at that. Because I know you want to get out, but my focus is staying out, getting out to stay out. So my vote is to deny today because of the high tiger. We have victim opposition. We have law enforcement opposition. And I see a need for a mental health evaluation. And the proximity is a good time date. Uh, you, you'll be out. You know, you got a you very short time for your home. Good luck to you, sir. Mr. Marabella. Um, yeah. Mr. Major, uh, I, I think you've worked very hard and I commend you on that. Uh, I know you're having struggles with uh, schooling and your education and, and I do appreciate that. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping that maybe something is opening up soon to, for you to be able to uh, combat some of those issues. Uh, you do have a, a poor supervision history. You do have a high tiger. I, I appreciate the comments made in your support on the fact that uh, it may have been calculated on a murder as opposed to a conspiracy to commit murder, but it nevertheless, it's still a high tiger. Uh, 
and you've got a close proximity date. Uh, you will have conditions, as, as uh, was pointed out. Uh, we could put conditions on you now if we were to grant. You're going to be getting out in December. You're going to have certain conditions put on you. Your parole officer is going to assist you and keep up with you. Uh, but I hope that you can take advantage of some of the programs that will be opening up between now and December. You'll be getting out in December. So good luck to you, sir. My vote is the same as Ms. Wise. All right, two votes to deny. I'm also going to vote to deny for the same reasons as stated. So three votes to deny. Today, your parole's been denied. Good luck to you. Okay, so I'll try to unpack this. It, it's, I'm a little bit confused. Um, I mean, this, this. so we have information of this story. It was basically a man that was in prison that uh, from prison orchestrated the killing um, of someone who was uh, who was suspected of, of, of maybe be, to testify against him. And that's always a serious case. He was convicted of that and found guilty and, and given life. <clears throat> now, in this case, Ma Major Gerard was um, accused of being one of those people to 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 commit that killing. Um, but it seems he somehow got the conspiracy charge, still got 25 years. So I think it was a plea deal. And we'll go through that. But yet was somehow paroled just, I mean, just a few years after, after taking a deal for 25 years. That I don't understand. And then it said he was revoked. And again, I'm confused. I'm just confused by that. It doesn't make any. Uh, I don't understand that part. Um, and anyways, now he's about to get out. I didn't think his attorney did a very good job, frankly. Uh, it's like he goes to train dogs, and he has to sit out. I mean, first I imagine that he's like training the dogs, and then she made it seem like. He's just used as someone who stands in the middle of the field so that the dog can find him. And it's like, it's, I just had two totally different perspectives until the attorney spoke about it. And I'm like, wait, so he's not actually training the dogs. He's just, they're just using him as a, as basically like a human scent dummy. Like what, 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 what? I don't know. Um, and then hell gosh what is how scary is that he's about to get out and they, they put him on work release and he's kicked out of work release in three months uh and the attorney says that they'll hire him back i believe that story yeah okay you make three months i mean the whole thing is pretty scary in terms of uh are you you know not gonna expect him to but I don't, you know, it does seem that he stayed out of trouble. So give him credit for that. But, um, okay, so let's jump into this stuff that Richard found for us. So this is written in 2014. Convict accused of orchestrating double murder, right? So, um, is accused of orchestrating the murder of 41-year-old Nikki Lundry and 54 is a double murder, double homicide, I should say. Uh, and the victims were found dead of multiple gunshot wounds in Lundry's apartment in September of 2013. Police said that Lundry was the primary target in the slaying. Authorities said Tompkins allegedly instructed his 18-year-old son and 35-year-old Gerard Major to kill Lundry, who was scheduled to testify in the trial uh, for Pepsi distribution. Can you imagine having your 18-year-old son do that? According to the carrier, Thompson was initially arrested in April 2011 in an investigation targeting the Pepsi dealers in Lafourche, dubbed Operation Dry Bayou. Agents had videotaped of Laundry, a police informant, buying the narcotics from Tom Tompkins. He was convicted and sentenced to 30 years. See, in Louisiana, you get 30 years for dealing. Harm a child, uh, probation, four-year sentence. It's your own child. Maybe you'll get two years. You know, because it's your child, of course, right? It's okay. 
and, and and I know it sounds like I'm being sarcastic, but actually the legislation is written even more leniently for incest than it is, which makes, you know, it's madness. But so they're both facing two counts of first degree uh, murder or homicide. Um, now, what we can go into, which is really much more detail, is the court transcript here. So this is an appeal from the man who orchestrated the murders, but it does get into some detail about what he had done. So on September 22nd, 2013, Jordan returned to the apartment he shared with his mother, who was one of the victims, and found her you know, killed in her bedroom. The second victim, Nikki's friend, Harry, was also found dead on the living room couch. Jordan immediately ran outside and contacted 911. Jordan provided a statement to the police informed them that he knew the defendant and had seen him in the apartment a few days prior to the, to the homicides. LaForge Paris Sheriff Office detectives found paraphernalia on Nikki's bed as well as casings near both victims. Detectives spoke with Von Bailey, who lived near the apartment building, which was on West Main Street. He told the detectives that he heard rumbling of a truck around 5 a.m., he looked outside of his window and saw the described as a light gold pickup truck. Two black males exited the truck, entered Nikki's apartment, stayed for approximately five minutes, and then left the truck. Shortly thereafter, a car that appeared to be a black Camaro or Trans Am drove up to the apartments and the light gold pickup truck returned. Bailey stated that it looked like the occupants of the two vehicles spoke for a short time and then the black vehicle left. The truck was parked right in front of Nikki's apartment door, and Bailey stated that he saw the two men that he saw earlier enter the apartment a second time. They stayed inside for 10 or 20 minutes as the truck sat idling outside. The two men then swiftly walked out, got back into the truck, and left the scene. Testimony established that Nikki was a confidential informant for the the first, I, I It's like I hear them say it, but I still can't say it. Lafourche, Lafourche, Lafourche. Um, Parish Drug Task Force and participated in an undercover investigation involving the defendant's father, resulting in criminal charges against him. Jailhouse calls made by Tompkins established that he sought to have Nikki killed so that he could not testify at his trial, which was for September 23rd, 2013. It's so funny that these career criminals like don't know that their calls are being recorded. It's just the strangest thing. You hear about this all the time. When the defendant was transported to the crime operator, and I know that people say, look, <laughs> we only hear about the dumb ones, right? The ones that are caught. We don't hear and read about the ones that are clever. And that's a good point. Now, when the defendant was transported to the crime operations center in Lockport for questioning related to the homicides, he admitted that he drove his uncle's truck to Nick's apartment and the here's our friend, Mr. Major, entered the apartment and Major shot Nikki. And so if he actually shot this, the, <laughs> and like literally, he literally got away with it. That's my, that's what it seems like. The defendant further admitted that he shot Harry twice. Records of cellular phone telephone number associated with the defendant indicated that he called Nikki on September 21st, 2013 at 1155 and 1158. The defendant's cellular phone records also established that he was at the scene of the, of the um, homicides at 4 or 4 a.m., on September 22nd, 2013, law enforcement also obtained surveillance video from the surrounding area, which depicted the truck matching the description of the defendant's uncle's truck in the apartment at the time of the homicides. And by the way, any like video foot nighttime video footage, like locally at 4 a.m., it's like at best, it's like that looks like the truck. I I had my my car hit the other day and I wanted footage um just for supporting you know, for the insurance. And I went to the gas station and this is great equipment, the whole thing, broad daylight, modern day technology. And even then you could like, you could see it's a truck, but it is not evidentiary. Like you can't, you can't say that it's not one of the thousand same pickup trucks that exist. You know, it's like, imagine what it was in 2013. But anyways, a firearm, I wonder if stuff like that could be submitted into evidence. 
Probably, but you just cross-examine it. Um, a firearms examiner testified that two separate firearms were used for the, for the uh, homicides. Two cartridge cases were found near Harry's body, and five cartridge cases were found near Nikki's body. The coroner testified that Nikki suffered eight gunshot wounds to her left arm and head. One of the wounds was penetrating, and seven were uh, perforating. Harry suffered three gunshot wounds, including one to the top of his head, one to the left side above the ear, which exited the right side of his face, and one to his right wrist that exited his hand. Of the wounds, one was penetrating and two were perforating. The cause of death for both victims was multiple gunshot wounds. Hearsay statements. In his first assignment of error, the defendant contends that the district court erred by admitting recording hearsay statements. Specifically, the defendant complained that the portion of the jail of cell phone calls made by Thomas and individuals other than the defendant should have been ruled inadmissible. He argues that those portions of the recordings are hearsay. There is no identification of the parties speaking to Thompson. With some exception, all relevant evidence is admissible for a two relevant evidence, blah, 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 blah. A statement of not hearsay is offered. I don't know how you can make that argument, but okay. Obviously, it didn't. Well, let's see. Is this the call? The court also ordered that, that irrelevant conversations in the recordings were to be redacted. The court reviewed the transcripts and noted which portions of the conversations it found to be relevant. All of the portions were redacted. On appeal, the defendant complains about three specific portions of the recordings that were not redacted. The defendant argues that in the first recording that was introduced, which took place in September 20, 2013, the following portions was inadmissible. Stevie, she could easily hide from them if she ain't trying to go to court. Now, on the other hand, if she's trying to go to court and you contact her, she might tell them, <laughs> um, it's so interesting that they like that they put stars on some of the wording and some of them they don't. And we have seen court transcripts where they just don't censor any word. I wonder what makes them censor, like how they make these decisions. Um, you know, he's been effing with her and threatening her, all that. Thomas, yeah, Stevie. <laughs> I... It seems like what he's saying is that she's not supposed to go to court. I know that I want that, what I really want before this night. You know what I'm saying? Immediately prior to the portion of the conversation, the defendant was on a three-way call with Thomas. Stevie, during the portion of the conversation, Thomas stated that the reason why I say the odd against say it was like because your task force they're going to go try to snatch her and they're going to try to put her in the place down there in that place um that in the jail down here told her to like go to court you know what i'm saying the defendant replied no uh cc I'm on top i'm higher the lawyer don't worry about it you know what i'm saying i don't know i can't really follow what's going on Oh, in the defendant's statement, he explains that hiring a lawyer was co for hiring for hiring a hitman. What morons! Um. Anyways, I'll put this link in the description. Obviously, it didn't work. They didn't suppress the evidence. And uh, he was convicted and he got a life sentence. They don't like when people try to kill uh, witnesses. But I mean, what else? But I don't know. Somehow the one who actually pulled the trigger is uh, today, at this moment, walking the streets. Um, if you can imagine that, I mean, pretty scary stuff. But, uh, 
he, he stayed out of trouble so far, and I don't know. I guess he, he did, like, just, I don't know, eight years in prison or something? I don't know. I don't know how you get away with such a short sentence. I really don't, but he did. And I'll put the links in the description. And with that, I'll let you.